phones. We all have them. In fact, you're probably watching this very video on one. According to my YouTube analytics, roughly 37% of this channel's views so far have come from mobile devices, compared to 30% from computers. But it wasn't always this way. Although early mobile phones had existed in the 70s and 80s during Doc 2's initial run, it wasn't until the show's hiatus in the 90s that they started to become more mainstream. By the time the show returned in 2005, things had changed dramatically, something which would need to be reflected in the new storylines. Therefore, in addition to introducing a new Doctor, a new companion, a new TARDIS, a new title sequence, and many, many more, Series 1 had the job of introducing mobile phones to the Doctor Who canon. These days, the prospect of a companion who doesn't own a mobile phone scarcely bears thinking about, but Rose Tyler was the first. Her mum, Jackie, also owns a mobile, and the pair use their devices to contact each other during the autumn attack seen at the climax of series opener, Rose. The following story, The End of the World, was significant for introducing the Superphone, an upgrade to Rose's mobile which, with the help of a bit of jiggery-pokery from the Doctor's sonic screwdriver, enables her to make calls across all of time and space. For instance, to her mum five billion years earlier. One of the first stories to use a mobile phone as a narrative device is World War 3. When the Doctor, Rose and Harriet Jones end up sealed away in Downing Street, Rose's superphone gives them a mean of contacting the outside world, enabling the Doctor to instruct Mickey on how to hack into units. In addition to this, earlier in the story, Mickey uses his own mobile to take a photo of the Savine which attacks him and Jackie, the first instance of a mobile phone being used as a camera in the show. At the end of the episode, Rose uses her superphone to call the Doctor, the first call made from a mobile device to the TARDIS on screen. This is accompanied by a small, pixel rendition of the TARDIS for the contact photo. In Father's Day, the battery from Stuart's dad's 80s style brick proves to be just what the Doctor needs to help retrieve his TARDIS. Another instance is Boomtown, in which the Doctor, Jack, Rose and Mickey are seen to each have their own mobile so they can keep in touch to track down Margaret the Slovene. However, it's not until Series 2's Rise of the Cybermen and the Age of Steel that mobiles are quite so integral to the plot. In the parallel universe in which the story is set, which comes to be known as Pete's World, the Cybus Industries Cybus Network is in operation, used to control all mobile devices and earpieces via Bluetooth. The network grants Rose internet access as soon as she arrives, which she uses to search the web for information about her dad, the first time a character is seen to use a mobile capable of accessing the World Wide Web. The climax of this story sees the first instance of mobile phones being used to save the day. Mickey uses his device to send the cancellation code to Rose's phone, which the Doctor then plugs into the docking station of the Cyberman control room, thus disabling the Cyberman's emotional inhibitors. The Doctor's most recent incarnations have all used mobile phones, though in more cases than not, they've had to borrow handsets from someone else, in most cases their companion. When he needed to contact Rose in Doomsday, he managed to persuade Jackie to lend him her phone, while in The Runaway Bride, the Doctor borrowed a phone from a guest at Donna's wedding reception so he could find out more about H.C. Clements. In the 10th Doctor's later seasons, the super phone became something of a staple, with both Martha and Donna receiving upgrades during their travels in the TARDIS. Martha's mobile is a vital asset to the Doctor in the Series 3 finale, first to allow him to speak to his old enemy, the Master, and then to hack into the Archangel network and create perception filters for himself, Martha and Jack. The Doctor finally gets a mobile of his own, of sorts, when Martha leaves him with her handset, so she has a way of getting in touch with him again if she needs to. One such occasion arises in Series 4, when Martha requires the Doctor's help to thwart the Sontaran stratagem. A more extreme example comes in The Stolen Earth, when the combined forces of Martha, Harriet Jones, Sarah Jane and Captain Jack are all able to make every phone on planet Earth call the Doctor's number. The signal sent out by Mr. Smith, boosted by the power of the Rift, is strong enough to reach the TARDIS right over in the Medusa Cascade, providing the Doctor with a means of connecting to the subwave network. We even get to see what the Doctor's phone number is. 077-00-900461. You can't actually call it though, because it's not a real number. Trust me, I've tried so that you don't have to. 
One final super phone is created in the 2009 special Planet of the Dead. Stranded on the planet San Helios, the Doctor must upgrade Barclay's device so that he can communicate with unit scientist Malcolm back on Earth. By the time Moffat's era began in 2010, camera phones were all the rage, with both Amy and Rory owning devices that are capable of taking photos as well as making calls. This proves particularly useful in the 11th Doctor's debut adventure, The 11th Hour. Rory's phone is full of photos of Prisoner Zero's various forms, which help the Atraxi identify the creature at the climax of the story. By comparison, the rest of series 5 and 6 are relatively sparse in terms of mobile phone action. Rory uses his device to take a photo in the Vampires of Venice, while Amy uses hers to snap a silence in the Impossible Astronauts so that she'll remember what it looks like when she turns away. In the second half of this story, Day of the Moon, Amy's device has an important role to play in the Doctor's plan to defeat the silence, used by Canton to capture the video recording of one of the creatures telling humanity to kill us all on sight, which is then broadcast on live television. Amy forgets her phone, the girl who waited, opting to go back to the TARDIS to retrieve it. This simple error leads to her becoming trapped in an entirely different time stream to the Doctor and Rory. Some brief calls are made between Amy and Rory when they're split up in Dinosaurs on a Spaceship, while a town called Mercy features a brief gag about Rory leaving his phone charger in Henry VIII's ensuite. By the time Clara Oswald became the Doctor's companion in 2013, smartphones were becoming increasingly common. Her proper debut story, The Bells of St. John, is all about Wi-Fi. In addition to laptop users, People on phones trying to get online can be seen in the story's opening montage, warning viewers about the episode's threat. Later in the episode, Miss Kittlet is able to hack into the phones of unsuspecting Londoners with ease and use photos taken for makeshift surveillance as she tracks down the Doctor. In Nightmare in Silver, Angie owns a phone, which ends up being infested by Cybermites. Fortunately for her, the Doctor gifts her a new one at the end of the story. In addition to this, Clara uses her phone to take photos of Archie and Angie enjoying the spacey Zuma ride. A whole host of phones appear in the 5th anniversary episode, The Day of the Doctor, including some of the first iPhones to feature in Doctor Who. One of these is owned by the unit staff member who takes a photo of the etching on the wall of the Tower of London's dungeons. McGillip also has an iPhone which picks up a time-wimey call from the Doctor, and as a nice continuity touch, the number on his phone screen appears to match the one seen in The Stolen Earth. Kate Stewart owns a slightly different smartphone, not quite an iPhone, but one that's equally as cool, with a TARDIS ringtone to alert her when the Doctor is calling. Moving into the Capaldi era, Clara receives a phone call from the 11th Doctor right at the end of Deep Breath. She uses this device to make further calls to both Doctor and Danny Pink throughout Series 8, in episodes such as Mummy on the Orient Express, Flatline in the Forest of the Night, and Dark Water. Mummy even reveals that Clara's contact photo for the 12th Doctor is a cartoon image of a stick insect, to tie in with previous comments made about his very stark appearance. As the 2010s progressed, smartphones became increasingly popular and increasingly multifunctional. The consequences of these changes on society, both positive and negative, are reflected in many of the 12th Doctor's stories. Smartphones are commonplace in Coal Hill School in episodes such as The Caretaker and In the Forest of the Night. In the latter, the Doctor recruits the school's gifted and talented Year 8 class to help him phone every mobile on Earth and assure everyone that the trees are a natural occurrence. The trend of using phones to take photos, in particular selfies, and share them on social media also emerged around this time. During her trip to the moon in Kill the Moon, Clara's pupil Courtney uses her phone to take a few photos, and to the Doctor's dismay, she ends up posting some of him on Tumblr. A few episodes later in Dark Water, when Cybermen start marching out of St. Paul's, the first instinct of people in the crowd is to take selfies with them. In the following seasons The Magician's Apprentice, Clara encourages another of her classes to get their phones out and share the hashtag, the planes have stopped, in response to the phenomenon outside. Later in The Woman Who Lived, she shows the Doctor a selfie taken by one of her pupils, lurking in the background of which just so happens to be a shielder. By this point, Clara has upgraded to an iPhone. In Before the Flood, she uses this device to FaceTime the Doctor from the drum, while in The Girl Who Died, she lends it to Heidi so that he can record the stunt involving the Maya, 
which she subsequently overdubs the Benny Hill theme tune over. An even more exciting development comes in Series 9's Zygon 2 parter, in which the Doctor is seen to own his very own mobile phone for the very first time. He uses it to call characters such as Case and Clara numerous times throughout the story. Clara's Zygon duplicate Bonnie steals her phone and uses it to film a Zygon transformation in the second half of this story, an example of modern technology being used in a negative way to perpetrate hate crime and encourage cyberbullying. Once again, a FaceTiming sequence is featured as the Doctor communicates with Bonnie and attempts to uncover her plan. A little later in the series, in Face the Raven, Riggsy's phone proves useful for helping the Doctor locate the hidden trap street. Once inside, Clara's surprised to find there aren't more members of the general public that have wandered inside while distracted by their phones, another allusion to the less helpful aspects of modern technology. You could even argue that this is the very reason Danny Pink met his death in Dark Water. He was too preoccupied by his phone call to Clara to see that there was a car about to hit him if he carried on walking. This thread is picked up again in the following season's Smile. The episode uses emojis as its prime inspiration and examines how our reliance on technology can sometimes fail us, presenting a scenario where some small miscommunications between man and machine lead to some very big problems. On a more positive note, new companion Bill owns the most multifunctional mobile phone to date. We see her using it to take photos in Smile, to browse the web in Thin Ice, and to play music in Knock Knock. The Doctor still owns his mobile from the previous series too, which he uses to call Bill at the end of Extremis. In the Pyramid at the End of the World, the phones of planet Earth take on an ominous quality as they display the Doomsday Clock countdown. In fact, the whole chain of events which leads to the near disaster in the Argo Fuel Lab can be attributed to a mobile. It is because he's distracted by his phone that Erica's husband shuts the door on her bag without thinking, destroying her glasses in the process. There's another fun reference to the impact of smartphones on modern society in the final part of this trilogy, The Lie of the Land. In a scene towards the end of the episode, the Doctor asks a passing student, nicknamed Appalling Hair, about the statue he is sitting on, a remnant of the monk's totalitarian regime. The only answer she can give is, uh, we thought they were just filming something here, or something, before returning to her mobile, the implication being that she, like the rest of society, is too preoccupied by technology to bat an eyelid about anything that actually matters, you know, like an alien invasion of Earth. Mobile phones have continued to have a strong presence in the most recent series, both in front of and behind the camera. Believe it or not, the Series 11 iconic promo image featuring the 13th Doctor on her TARDIS started life as an impromptu set photo taken on an iPhone by the Ghost Monument cast member Sean Dooley. The YouTube video by Ryan that formed the very first shot of the series was also recorded on an iPhone. The woman who fell to earth had the job of introducing the show's new ensemble cast, made up of four characters, plus Grace, who guests in this episode. Throughout the story, mobile phones are used to facilitate communication between these characters and to develop the plot, from Ryan's phone call to the police upon finding an alien pod, to the Doctor's reformatting of Ryan's phone to create a tracking device which allows her to locate Tim Shah. Also set in modern day Sheffield, Arachnid in the UK features mobile phones prominently. Practically every character in the story owns one. Staff member Frankie uses her device as a torch when roaming the underground tunnels beneath the hotel, also recording a confessional video message for her insurance policy. In one of the series' most memorable death scenes, Frankie's demise is captured on the camera of her mobile, a classic instance of horror being suggested rather than shown. A completely different use of mobiles comes at the end of the story when Ryan uses his smartphone to play the local radio station and blast out some Stormzy. This tames the spiders, thus solving the problem of the episode's threat. The most recent episode to date, Resolution, is another where mobiles are integral to the plot. The Doctor borrows Yaz's device to track down the Dalek-possessed Lin and uses it to try and ring units, only to be greased by dim call centre Lady Polly. A mobile contributes to the plot resolution of another story in a much smaller but equally as significant way, Rosa. At the start of the story, the Doctor reveals that she once gave Elvis a mobile phone. Fortunately for her, this device was then passed on to Frank Sinatra, 
who the Doctor is then able to contact from 1950s Alabama to arrange a VIP experience for bus driver Griffin as part of her plan to foil Crasco's attempts to change history. Elsewhere in the series, a delighted Doctor creates a modern day analogy for the particle accelerator on board the Saranga hospital ship, describing it as the iPhone version of CERN. Whenever we see Yaz's sister Sonia, she's always tapping away at her mobile phone, a clear embodiment of our obsession with modern technology, like appalling hair in series 10. Another episode to feature social commentary concerning mobiles is Kablam, in which warehouse worker Dan, otherwise known as Lee Mack, laments that whilst we were busy staring at our phones, technology went and nicked our jobs. But nowhere is this idea expressed quite as overtly as in Resolution, when the recon Dalek drains all of the UK's Wi-Fi, leaving an ordinary family struggling to operate, and struggling to talk to each other. From the super phones of the RTD era, used to make calls and send messages all across time and space, to the camera phones capable of taking photos, and the smartphones capable of accessing the internet introduced during the Moffat era, right up to the present day, and social commentary about the downsides of relying on modern technology, mobile phones have always been a vital part of revived Doctor Who. Even in the 14 year period that the show has been back on our screens, they've developed a great deal, becoming much more mainstream and increasingly sophisticated. Advancements in mobile technology show no signs of slowing down, and it'll certainly be interesting to see how they impact, or inspire, future Doctor Who storylines. Thank you so much for watching this video everybody, it's been a mammoth task this one, a huge huge task, getting all the research together and the screenshots and, and everything from basically all of revived Doctor Who, uh, right across each Doctor's era from 9 till 13. Please do subscribe if you haven't already, I really appreciate that, and like the video and comment below your thoughts on mobile phones in Doctor Who, how they've been used and how they've impacted the show's storylines. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching once again, and I'll see you soon for some more Doctor Who videos. Goodbye for now, guys.